Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. What an effing year it's been, and it's only January 31st. Slow your roll, 2023. Slow your roll. You just might burn out at this pace, bro. This is the Almost Daily Zencast. Hello and namaste. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. I am your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Let's get started. Greetings and salutations, friends. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and good night to you. And welcome from wherever around the world you listen to this delightfully silly and absurdly amateur show. And I say amateur with pride, not with shame, as some might want it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Almost Daily Zencast. I am your literary fictional... Uh, MacGuffin character from a sci-fi adventure book series you've never heard of. Um, fictional character, real life uh, world views on current events, um, uh, politics, culture, art, society, and the grand nexus uh, between all of those uh, worldly things and the spiritual um, welcome, friends. This podcast is available for you to enjoy on various platforms. Pick your choice from Sprecher.com all the way down to GeoSavan and everything in between on the list. Podchaser, Podcast Addict, Deezer, CastBox, Good Pods, Google Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts. You can tune in to this show. Subscribe, follow, download. Hit the like button. Leave your comments on any episode you be listening to. And by the way, for those who may be new to the show, the Almost Daily Zencast is presented in such a way as that it is both a journey forward in time, as in this moment now when I'm dropping a new episode and you may or may not be catching it live or in you know, the immediate minutes, days, hours, weeks after it's been posted, but also backwards through the last six years or so of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, the history of this podcast in existence and um, my, uh, you know, somewhat satirical, somewhat um, nonsensical, slightly absurdist, but truly authentic, uh, sincere, and genuinely presented um, concerns, questions, commentary, and critique of, uh, you know, all the things that are going on. And wowzers, folks. Wowzers. I mean, I, it, I'm i not, like, starting a trend here. I'm really late to the party of this meme in all its forms. But holy moly, what a crazy year it's been. And it's only Jan Tuesday, January 31st. And I almost managed to start nearly on time to be able to say that at 11, 11 a.m., which was... You know, part of my uh, envisionment this morning, but I kind of stumbled my way into not being on time to that. Um, and you know what they say, uh, to quote the Falcon, you're either early or late, or whatever he says in the show. There's variations, um, as there are variants of all things, uh, on that saying. Um, somebody in my in my real life lived experience in my professional, one of my many professional gigs in one of the various fields uh, of, uh, uh, of different things I've, you know, done for a living, said something to the effect of, um, on time is late and early is on time. And there might have been occasionally when he was in a grumpy mood, something salty about being late right at the end that was like, you know, Rrr. Like, don't be late, bro, kind of intimidation level um, stuff. Um, but I digress. Time doesn't exist, friends, only clocks do. And you can get as paranoid about that as you may want. Um, 
I mean, time does exist and it doesn't exist. It's a probability waveform function that's operating at an angle that like n neither of our uh, mental ideological constructs about it uh, align with. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, but I digress, friends. Welcome to the show. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. All the original opinions, personal anecdotes, creative ideas, social satire, theoretical, theoretical theories, online content, and other intellectual, original intellectual property as expressed on the show are, except for when otherwise indicated, and I try to be as clear as possible about that, um, entirely those of the online creative performance artist and content creator known as the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo, in collaboration with me, myself, and I, and, of course, my th uh, fourth imaginary friend, the uh, the multi-dimensional cosmic famous uh, DJ Zed, um, curator and creator of all things discotheque synthetica here um, in this alternate universe from which he does not hail from. Uh, welcome to the show. It's a strange show. It's a weird experimental show. Um, and it is strange. Uh, for those of you who do not know, um, as you jump around and enjoy the show from its various seasons, which are not organized uh, according to seasons, I've thought about doing that. I could go through and spend like the entire day uh, clicking buttons and, and checkboxing uh, checkboxes on my uh, control panel over here on Sprecher.com and organize the six years worth of content into seasons. Um but I'm not really sure what that would do to uh, existing subscribers who ha who are working their way through the show and whether or not new uh, uh, in new encounter listeners who are just checking out the show randomly, whether or not that would help or just confuse. Um, but I humbly encourage you all, whether you're uh, an old school diehard fan or someone just dropping into checking out this episode for the very first time and going, hmm, what is this show all about? I humbly encourage you to consider it uh, a, a sort of choose-your-own-adventure, jump, jump around and mix and match uh, kind of show, um, not meant to be uh, uh, listened to linearly, but but rather um, to be hopped around in uh, like you might jump through various timelines um, in some sci-fi action adventure. Um, okay, let us reset the mind for a moment and and DJ Zed's been uh, sort of eagerly awaiting this moment now uh, as he as he gleefully presents to you the live to tape improvised performance of his latest and greatest uh, entitled Dawning of the Darkest Nights um, a DJ Zed uh, uh, remix live pressure techno live to tape improvised audio asset digital loop uh, beat performance lovingly created with digital and animatronic cybernetic love um, from, you know, his uh, artificial, uh, the cockles of his artificial heart. There we go. The, the phrasing of that almost misfired. Deep from the, the, the cockles of his cybernetic heart, uh, uh, straight to your uh, discotheque-loving ear holes, if you hate it, let us know. This is sort of an experiment in in uh, in mixing and matching things and uh, trying to trying to blend together something that people enjoy. Uh, on the flip side, we'll start talking about some of the crazier things that have been going on in the past thirty-one days that have left some of us, if not most of us, feeling a bit uh, exhausted as we barely, uh, you know, initiate the 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 um the endless journey around this delightful solar system here we go friends without further ado
it's okay to get up and wiggle, shake it out, and rise, to lift up those physical vibrations. It's part of the idea, friends. We're weird and wacky show. Welcome back. That's some DJ Zen for you. If you'd like to enjoy uh, the latest and greatest and some of the classic classics of DJ Zen, a literary fictional character from a uh, sci-fi action adventure book series you've never heard of yet. Um, Guffins all around, and that is real life as you take the term for this. I'm not making this up. Although I am, although I'm not, it's a double book series that is yet to be finalized. Um, welcome back. This podcast is itself a MacGuffin inside the literary book series. For I myself am um, uh, the imagineered character stranded in your universe from another universe whose uh, only means of survival while stranded here, um, very much like my dearly departed friend Ford Prefect, which is a fan fiction reference to a character that I have no license to use, uh, no infringement is intended, um, Please protect me under the whatever the rules and paradigms of fan fiction are here in your universe. Uh, but very much like him, I'm stranded here on planet Earth, which um, or whatever you call your 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 spheroid living um, uh, cosmic womb that is giving life to you and everything else around you. Uh, some uh, in some dimensions, because I'm existing in multiple dimensions at once, friends. Uh, and that's sort of like the gig. That's the gambit of of my my sci fi action adventure book series, um, which you can find some of the early uh, updrafted teasers and sample chapters from the the many titles thereof over at Wattpad dot com. If you've never heard of Wattpad dot com, you're missing out. Go check it out. Okay, friends, on to the the seriousness of this. It's been a crazy roller coaster year. Uh, now, I do not pretend to be a journalist. Okay, friends. I am a fictional character from a literary universe other than your own, trapped here in whatever dimension on whatever insert name of your planet here you find yourself to be in, dear audience, as you listen to this, with very real, sincere, heartfelt opinions. And let me tell you, I've been in some crazy situations, both in real life as the creator behind this nonsense, and in my fictional action-adventure comic book adventure life as the character that you're uh, getting to know slowly. Uh, and let me tell you, in terms of, like, baseline, contextual, world, current events, wackadoodle, what the F is going on, craziness levels, 2023, here in your timeline, on your planet, whether you, uh, and, and like, because there's, like, a convergence wave that I'm experiencing collectively, which has multiple planets in it, but you're all kind of basically living through the same series of nearly unpredictably unprobable events that are unfolding before you. And this branch of the multiverse just takes the cake. It gets the A++ award of like, wow, this is normal baseline? Um, and so many things are going on here. Uh, and uh, if you want to, and like I said, I don't pretend to be a journalist. I'm just an observer of what's going on in the worlds in which I encounter myself in. And uh, if in your universe you have an internet, and in your, I mean, obviously, if you're listening to my show, you do, because that's how I present it to the to the many worlds to which I present it to. Um, but uh, go on the internets and find your universe's version of Wikipedia. There might be pronunciation or spelling, you know, variants involved. There might not. Um, and I mean no infringement. Wikipedia, as you may or may not realize, is the internet's free encyclopedia um this isn't they're not paying me nor are they endorsing me or nor do they um in any way shape or form um you know uh am i connected to them i'm just a real life peruser of their content and never i am today years old friends it only had never occurred to me until just moments before going live on the air to be like huh is there like a a roundup of current events list on wikipedia and there, indeed, I didn't even know that they had these things called portals. Um, uh, 
And I'm not entirely clear exactly how they work other than I typed in uh, current events of January 2023 and here's what I got. It's a, a, a really complex, detailed, day-by-day breakdown of world events as, uh, as documented by a multitude of sources. And you can get into the, you know, the many, uh, many uh, spiraled rabbit hole discussion argumentation about whether or not any of these sources, including the one I'm referencing, um, are worthy of... Uh, or, uh, you know, are, are valid or invalid or whatever. Um, to the best of my understanding, um, no matter how you slice it, you have to make your own best efforts. Like, you can't take my word for it, right? Not if you're being uh, cynical and perhaps even, and I say this without any disrespect, paranoid enough. Uh, I, I say that as neutrally as possible uh, about what's going on uh, in the world around you to, you know, you got to decide for yourself. And some may, of course, instantly choose to mock, ridicule, troll me about my choice. But it's, it's astonishing, um, the collection of things, uh, you know, and the multitude of which I'm sure that even a reasonably well-informed person will be like, huh, I had no idea that was going on. Um, you know, ranging from the list of ongoing global conflicts, uh, uh, in various nation states that you may or may not already be well aware of or might not be, um, uh, to, you know, the list of the most recent um, catastrophic, uh, unpredictable events, um, ranging from economic crises uh, uh, to, uh, you know, the outburst of violence and whatnot. Um, and of course, you know, to try and discuss the, the 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 complete list of events would would take days, if not weeks, um, and, uh, and and would probably be ultimately an exercise in in, in staring into. Um, the abyss, uh, 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 you know, of of uh, all the all the tragedy and pain um, that one must was uh, must must in some way, form, or fashion navigate, uh, and that can be quite the overwhelming experience uh, for anyone, but especially uh, anyone living close to or in direct. Um, personal impact uh, of any or multiple of these uh, uh, intense events, um, and at the, at a global stage, it's it there's there's too much to even begin to talk about, um, and of course, uh, you know, who who am I to pontificate um, on the global stage? I don't know, uh, other than. The, uh, you know a humble observer of this of this um unfolding of of uh of the you know the very fabric of you know time space and reality vis-a-vis -vis, um you know the the interactive uh, nature of of action reaction mind and and uh and matter uh, not to get to suddenly try to drop the needle on some sort of deep esoteric angle to all of this. Uh, but to try and summarize, given that I am, you know, the host of a show in which I, I try to observe something or some, some items on the spectrum of things going on in the world and, and, and convey my opinion uh, and or my concerns and or my questions about them um, for the sake of contributing them, contributing these uh, them as content to to the to the to the world chorus of public discourse, um, uh, not from a perspective of of you know uh, uh, in any way shape or form believing that that I've solved anything, um, uh, but rather uh, from the perspective of of wondering out loud really loudly so that others may be 
you know, take on curiosity and, and question for themselves the same line of thinking and explore for themselves, uh, you know, the same kinds of questions, uh, not in any way, you, you know, not, not to dictate ideas, but rather to, uh, to propose, um, you know, uh, a, a community of people to uh, engaged in exploring. Um, but it's, it's a heartbreaking, it, it, even if we try to be, if I pretended to be a news show, right, in, in a more robust sense, and tried to be just like, here's a bunch of the news items, it's an overwhelming list from, you know, conflicts all over the place, um, wars that must be, um, re, you know, waging, being waged, rather, uh, at various degrees of, of brutality, uh, to to an ongoing series of of epidemic crises um, that that even taken individually can seem to any um, any earnest uh, well intentioned um, reasonable uh, person or collection of people, uh, you know, interested in, in, in working towards a solution can seem nearly insurmountable, uh, because of the complexity, right? Uh, and it's, it's no easy feat to even try to distillate them, but the, so much of them, so many of the things going on in the world, um, are obviously deeply entrenched in uniquely specific origin stories, let's say. And I don't mean to belittle that or in any way, shape, or form dismiss them as as, as less than anything um, but the lived experiences of the people going through uh, any of the given, um, you know, current events, quote-unquote. Uh going on in the world or that have been going on in the world. It's been a wild and crazy rough and tumble roller coaster ride, you know, for as long as I've been stranded here. And it just seems like the turbulence level, uh, the rough and tumble nature and the, the escalating speed at which, um, both the apparent unfolding of events and our capacity or ability, whether it's healthy for us or not, to communicate about and and ingest, you know, uh, depictions of such events seems to just be exponentially growing. You know, both the rate at which and things seem to be happening in the world, and and the speed or the efficiency or the or the dare I even put it in these terms, the gluttony by which we can consume content, um, either. You know, detailing in in deep dive senses about individual things, or uh, 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 broad spectrum, um, you know, recapping in sort of the the sense I sort of intended to do this show. It, all of it. I mean, and I'm speaking from sort of the place of, from which I I find myself in. All of it can be overwhelming, right? As I have indeed, in a real sense in a personal sense, as a creator, as a, as a real life individual, um, uh, and as a, a, in the sense that I'm trying to like, um, embed into some sort of the thinking of, of like, uh, you know, things that can be true about the character that I'm crafting, um, in various stages or in various points, um, in his multitude of adventures. Um, and this overwhelming wall of human phenomena, to put it one way, of, of lived experience, to put it another, uh, is, is, overwhelm is so overwhelming on all fronts, on all levels, to anyone and everyone that either willingly or casually or sort of even unconsciously uh, delves into it from any angle, into any stream of reporting, from any 
series of sources um, that it's it's almost natural, one might say, uh, that a collective tendency is to isolate and um, what's the term? I don't mean to sound cynical, but sort of echo chamber nest or silo to be a little bit less cynical sounding. Um, I'll, you know, the information consumed, right? Uh, and I include myself in this. I'm not trying to be like, I'm better than all of you people. No. Uh, and neither is the fictional character, by the way. Um, but in, in very real terms, um, I've experienced and observed uh, the very sort of real-life, mundane, um, subtle phenomena that there may or may not be a lot of um, of other reporting or discussion about going on the uh, uh, you know it's it serves a purpose to sort of build a web of intellectual comfort boundaries right um and to sort of contend with any and all content that may reside outside of those boundaries as just not to be contended with, to put it as neutrally as possible. Um, and purely at a practical level, uh, this serves a purpose because let's, let's just be real. As a content creator, as a lifetime, lifelong consumer of content, um, and as someone who, who should have, could have, would have maybe um, aspired to, to, to craft a career in, in the heady, if perhaps a bit absurd, um, uh, business of commenting on content as content creation in, in its own lane, uh, there's too much effing content. Even at a purely journalistic, factual level, there's too many things going on. There's too many actions being taken by too many people in the world that are, quote, newsworthy. And I, I'm not judging anything or anybody or any or any process or any establishment by that, right? And I and I'm not trying to weave uh, any sort of thesis or or theory, conspiratorial or otherwise, about it just yet. Um, in as much as that, my theory is sort of starts from a different place than than many people might assume. Um, but I do want to observe and comment on uh, some of the goings on um particularly here in in you know the context i find myself in uh as a as a um as a nearly lifelong uh and this is a bit of of, of comedy here but like legal alien resident of and i i love that terminology because you know the play on words of alien in terms of the fictional sense um, but as an observer that can, that can, that it feels acculturated and that's a word I'm sure I've often forgotten, like the file card for it didn't come up. Like, here's the vocabulary word you want in that sentence you're building, uh, in my brain, like failed. And I just got a blank card, but as someone that must confess to you, dear audience, as, you know, intellectually, um, you know, part of my real life personality identity profile is that of someone that is deeply acculturated. Um, and I don't mean that in a, in any kind of dark way or any kind of condescending way or any kind of self, uh, uh, aggrandizing way or any, I just mean as a matter of fact, the way, you know, um, others might say they uh, you know, might be described uh, or might describe themselves uh, in ways different, you know, in, but similar in terms of their lived experience. I am someone whose lived experience has, le has left them feeling um, neither as an insider nor quite an outsider here in this, in this uh, place, um, which I adore. 
by the way, for the record, to be clear. Um, like someone in love with a perfectly imperfect, uh, deeply flawed uh, fellow human individual. And I don't mean to sexualize my relationship to the nation state that I reside in, uh, but rather to romanticize it. I, I'm a deep admirer and respectful, uh, um, romantic, uh, and sort of like, you know, um, uh, also often, and I use my words with as much discretion as I think I'm capable of, sometimes in all honestly disappointed, uh, but never outraged, uh, partner of the country that I live in, I guess, you know, like if it were a, a marriage, <laughs> if my relationship with this, with this, with this multifaceted, multidimensional, very complicated entity that we call the United States of America, uh, and or Trumptopia, depending on which timeline you you happen to be in, um, <laughs> uh, I must respectfully describe it as one that's experienced a lot of turbulence, right? If, if I had to hyper-personify and therefore fictionalize my, my relationship uh, w uh, as a resident of this nation-state with the nation-state um, as an entity, I'd be like, we've had our, 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 our loving honeymoon and, and, and golden moments, and, and we've hit the rocks in turbulent times, and, and, uh, and we struggle on. And we aspire, uh, I think... <laughs> as the husband in the pairing, I think we aspire, if I may be so weird as to do that, we aspire to to uh, continue the relationship despite um, whatever disagreements uh, and and uh, turbulent times may, may still lay ahead. Um, having said that, dear friends, I think it is, as many others before me have thought, both, both, uh, um, what's the term? Expats from other places that, that have, have, uh, lovingly cultivated, you know, their, their, pa the, is patronage the right term? I don't think so. Um, uh, their, There's a term I'm looking for, and the flashcard isn't coming up, and I apologize. Um, but their their livelihoods and 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 cultural um, placements here, uh, as well as native-born sons of the state, um, uh, to critique um, the thing we love is to love it, right? As long as our critique is well intentioned and and based on uh, our lived experience, as sincerely reported and not uh not some sort of ideological madness if i may be so bold as to say um and that's that's a hill i'm willing to stand on uh and, and it's a you know it's a feature of the uh, uh of the literary fictional context that my uh that my character which if you've been a long time listener of the show i think you've i've i've explained in a few instances enough that i think everybody gets the gets the gambit or gets the gist. Um, uh, and I don't know. Does that make my show sort of excruciatingly annoying and unlistenable to, or does it make my show an interesting uh, and, and you know, uniquely engaging thing to listen to? Especially, you know, I don't know how many people are listening to the show and are also uh, venturing into the other dimensions of the Zepoverse, as I call it. Um, but please do stay tuned and join me as I... Um, once again, ramp up my activity on all fronts and start to interconnect and interweave some of the ingredients in, in episodes here on the audio only podcast experience of many platforms, uh, you know, as, as featured before or, um, on any of the other things. Uh, so we're going to jump into some detailed observations of some of the, um, highlights of concerning things that I have questions and, and observe, you know, comments to make um, about what's been going on here, uh, you know, na at a national level. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll be coming back in the not too distant future to do a similar episode uh, with a, 
a similar list of things going on at like the global scale. Um, but first, let us cleanse the palate once again with a brief uh, and, and if not somewhat indulging a uh, bit of uh, Muzak for Hot Second um, while I reset my own mind and, uh, and, and get up and wiggle to keep the blood flowing um, as it is a brisk and chilly day uh, here today uh, on the West Coast um, on this Tuesday. Welcome to the sober, uh, cold, harsh light of day of the new year as we really sort of move together forward in time. Um, is it, and as always, there is a valid question. Is it too soon to ponder some of the most recent events that have just happened? Or is it just right to take a moment and go, huh, whew, really, all, all that shit really did just all happen uh, and we really did just all collectively experience it um, as a community of communities. Um, and and it has, uh, you know, had the impact that it's had on all of us in different ways and at different levels of intensity. Uh, and and we really are facing a new day, a new week, a new month, a new cycle, uh, both in real life terms at your own levels in your own lived experiences and in terms of the collective, you know, uh, perceptual uh, multi-tiered phenomena that is the, you know, the phenomena we might all collectively recognize as the news cycle of news cycles. Uh, and we, we really can and should all sort of <sighs> take a pause and exhale um, the worst of it and try to inhale the best of it. And for some of us, that may mean getting up and wiggling. And that's quite all right. And for some of us, that may not. For some of us, that may just may mean nodding our head as we sit in our chairs or our, or our uh, public uh, conveyances or our private conveyances as we, as we listen along collectively and create the theatrical mind space that is the weird abstract daydreamy space that is collectively experienced at an individual uh, uh, level and collective level amongst us all as we indulge in being the audience of all this content that we consume. Thank you for being here and consuming this content and taking a moment to, to delve in all the many ways you might respond or react in your own mind theater as you listen to this. See you on the flip side, friends. Take a moment to just let it all go and let it all come at you in whatever ways it might as you indulge in this next audio break with the titled uh, uh, Live to Tape Improvised Performance called Remembered Echoes Resonating. It's DJ Zed and all the crazy imagined and real world collaborators at SeaTac Studios bringing you a remix live uh, Soulful Piano 101 improvised performance on uh, on the digital audio assets for your entertainment. Please consume accordingly. Oh, my God. 
As we let the music fade, we base ourselves to discuss some of the peak moments of the last 31 days here, uh, um, you know, that I've taken note of. Thank you, DJ Z, and forgive me for, for cutting you off. That track goes on for quite a beautiful, delightful mo further moment, but um, let's let it be. Uh, friends... It is with no it is it is with no joy that I that I choose to discuss these events um because deep down um one of the things that is paramount to me is that each of these things, in their own way, brings about great pain and suffering, both in um, the realities of those that are living through them in, in direct and immediate content of their own personal lives. Um, you know, so to discuss uh, events of the world from which I may not be, you know, directly connected, um, is to Uh, to discuss these events is to uh, uh, acknowledge, right, in, at some level or another, um, the great suffering that these events are causing in the world. And um, that is no easy feat and no, no casual thing. Uh, And it's been, it's been a rough couple of years to sort of, sort of kick off 2023 in this sort of whirlwind of events that have been challenging to witness. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's no comforting thing to say the least. Some of the craziness so far um, which has been at the center of my attention because I see it as a series of loosely and indirectly, but sometimes quite um, intensely interconnected uh, events that have a, a resonance to them that points to uh, a larger picture and a deeper root cause, which ultimately um, is, you know, the overarching theme of my commentary, because I don't think this root cause is often um, at the focus of our discussion or our efforts. And if there's anything I'm trying to bring to the table uh, as as being an amateur content creator that's that's trying to to build an audience in a community, is that we, you know. We must take action, and that action should uh, be anchored from a perspective of a, of understanding this. I, I think, um, and and wanting and a desire to explore it deeper uh, before um, before t taking that action too far. Uh, lest we, you know, doom ourselves to repeat history. Um, and, 
as a background item, and I don't mean to minimize it in any way, shape, or form, because uh, it is it is not something to be minimized, but the ongoing chaos of brutally extreme weather, right? These extreme weather events that continue to happen in alarmingly uh, increasing rates of intensity and proximity to one another and um and epicness epicness of scale on in every way you could measure and that was, and forgive me for you know not not sounding more articulate than i am sounding uh and of course background or contextualized around the the simple reality of these things happening the context around that, which cannot be ignored, which is the ongoing ideological, politi- politicized debate. Ideologically and politically polarized debate. It's a better sentence structure there. Ideologically and politically polarized, socio-economically uh, impactful and, uh, and, of course, meaningful uh, and of course, influential debate, discussion, public discourse, argumentation. Some, from a cynical enough perspective, may say um, corrupt, manipulated, uh, engineered treadmill of distractionary, like the influenced debate, discourse, discussion, argumentation. Uh, about it, about climate events. I don't want, I'm not trying to avoid using the term climate change, but I also don't want to get bogged down in all of that because the key word is a hot, is a hot loaded hashtag in every way imaginable, right? Hashtag climate change. Um, is it real? Is it not real? Is it happening? Is it not happening? Is it man-made? Is it perfectly natural? Is it Something to not to not worry about, but rather engineer around, or something to try to deter, uh, and and everything in between. That that debate, that argumentation, whether it's naturally, organically occurring, and and, and only hyperpartisan and hyperpolarized because the people are, or the other way around, uh, the debate itself. is raging so intensely and has been has been for so long um, that it has stymied and log jammed or logger jammed um, or uh, constipated if you prefer uh, the otherwise necessary development and deployment of strategic response to its undeniable happening, the undeniable occurrence of this ongoing series of cataclysmic uh, seemingly in, you know intensifying to a degree that it, it's alarming um intense extreme weather events right uh and, and the billions and billions you know, and that isn't even to invoke the billions and billions of dollars in in infrastructure damage uh and property damage and and um loss of life damage and loss of livelihood damage that they're causing, that they keep causing over and over and over again. Uh, One of the most um, truly alarming themes, which, you know, you can get into a cynical debate about whether it's manipulative or not. And surely, yes, in in some instances, it's being used in a manipulative way, but it's it's also an undeniable reality of facts on the ground. There are 
too many lives, too many American cities that have literally and factually been struggling to respond to and heal from and recover from, you know, on every metric you can, you can, you know, literally measure uh, in terms of their infrastructure and rebuilding, in terms of the, you know, the, the lost um, the businesses uh, and all of that and the rebuilding and the reconstruction and, and the lost private property and the rebuilding and reconstruction involved there. From 10 years ago, there are communities in, the, in this country that have yet to fully recover in very real, very undeniable, very pragmatic, practically measurable ways uh, and, and have been struck with new tragedy, with new calamity, with new destructive, you know, um, impacts of this, this ongoing uh, extremification of the weather. Um, and not to sound like an alarmist and not to be pigeon, pigeonholed as, uh, you know, um, a climate change fear monger, because I don't believe that I am. I'm just reporting uh, my observed lived experience that I, you know, that is measurable and confirmable to the best of my ability. And, and no, as of yet, I don't have the means of production or, or the capital investment um, foundation upon which I could be like, I'm running a journalistic effort to travel to places and, uh, and investigate and verify and, and bring back at you, but you know, from my from my own backyard uh, to to the anecdotal experience of people that I know in real life, uh, and to, and to that which can be undeniably witnessed in in terms of live journalism, right? Uh, which is then backed up by. Um, by the 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 eyewitnessing and I, the eyewitness testimony of, of those who live there, um, the the exponential intensity or the the exponential way in which this has been happening for the last two years, three years, five years, ten years, literally thirty, forty years, uh, is undeniable right it can't be wished away and 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 no matter what explanation any group or or individual or you know whatever explanation i may uh espouse or or choose to think is most likely to 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 be accurate um the elephant in the room is that like we're not doing a good job of changing our collective civic behavior. Like we're not doing a, a good enough job of responding to how, you know, of, of, of mm, let me, let me rephrase what I was about to say. And I, and I say this with all like the, do the, you know, the, the very real respect and, and admiration due to those who are doing their job out there in our civic life to the best of their abilities um, without, uh, without corruption and for the, you know, the greatest possible good. Um, but we must swallow the bitter pill as a species, you know, and I, and I say this, you know, as, as, a, as a critical thinker and, and, and as an observer of, of everything we, from a compassionate perspective. Um, but we, we must acknowledge that we, we have not been responding to these events at a strategic level in a way that preserves the dignity and safety and integrity of the lives of the people impacted by all of these events in an equal and just and humane way 
um, and in such a way that is forward thinking enough that it mitigates, prevents, or it, it, it in as as realistic and as um, sustainable a way possible um, avoids the living through of these kinds of disastrous um, infrastructure uh, loss type events again and again and again. I don't know. Am I making sense? Um, like, yes, plenty of, of efforts have, have happened. Some people's lives are still topsy-turvy and inside out in a way that's ever so slightly intolerable. And some people's lives have been disastrously destroyed in a way that just should outrage everyone. And yet the world just kind of grinds on and new problems occur and new waves of, of climax, you know, uh, of disastrous climactic, you know, as in, you know, the climate renders new weather on a day to day, week to week, month to month basis. Um, and the argument in the background rages on and yo, Folks, to those of you embedded you know, on that treadmill, you know, on either side of the of the treadmills of treadmills, sort of echo chambering of of that issue, just arguing about it doesn't achieve much, and just telling others that they're wrong about their argument doesn't help much, right? And and, and yes, of course, we can all do more to help those impacted um, and in worse off conditions than we find ourselves in. Um, but we must also, I think, if I may be so bold as to speak, uh, uh, you know, propose the following. If, if I may be so bold as to propose the following, we must also truly confront the reality as it is of what these, these climate trends are rendering, how they're rendering it in terms of, you know, the... There's no reason to think everything's just going to somehow really conveniently, really effortlessly, really immediately pivot back to whatever heyday or golden era one might be nostalgically clinging to in our memories of what ideal weather ought to be like. There's no real evidence that that's just going to happen. One can hope and pray for that, and I'm not disparaging hoping and praying. There's a time and a place and a, and, a, and a way of practicing those things that I think is truly beneficial. But also, the living system of systems that is this chaos engine um, that we call the planet we live on, uh, it has its own mechanisms and its own interconnected systems which we have, let us be honest, let us be so bold and so brave as to collectively acknowledge that the following is true. We have wildly disrespected Mother Nature in order to get where we are, to have the luxuries and the fundamental um, uh, necessities even. This is one of the hardest things that like it's applicable in nearly every discussion because nearly every discussion sort of if acknowledging it barely pays lip service to it and doesn't confront it in a meaningful, practical, pragmatic way of like, OK, what do we do next if we acknowledge the following is true? But nearly every every man made and pardon the sort of uh, implied or inherent chauvinism of that terminology, but it's there and it must that's a whole different issue that is also just as vital and just as in deep need of addressing, but not my current focus. But every every human species made to try to be as 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 all inclusive as possible, no matter how useful, no matter how much convenience it has brought us, no matter how delightfully we might adore it and love it, and mind you, I'm including everything that I'm looking at in my living and working environment. Everything we've created. Everything we've created is, in one way, shape, or form or another, toxic AF. And all of that toxicity has just been pumped 
belligerently into this delicate, fragile, robust system of systems, right? Because you can't, you can't just call it one thing. It's a nuanced, sophisticated, um, living, because we objectify it to the point that we can say, oh, it's just an object. Therefore, we have supremacy over that object. Therefore, we can do whatever we please with this collection of objects, right? If we look at the world and its collection of resources as objects, if we objectify the living womb that gives birth to us and all other things that we call life, and we continue to objectify, to, to live in such a way, and I, and I don't mean like, let's all suddenly just abandon everything and live in the woods. That's a bit too extreme, right? Uh, all reformers point out their, their concerns and their reasons for wanting reform um, in a way that, that we must acknowledge is too blunt for immediate like reversal, right? We must rationally acknowledge it and then collectively course correct towards true, lasting, meaningful, sustainable, non-toxic change. But there's no escaping that reality. And it's tough because we love our cards. We love our toys. We love our, our tools. We love our, our meaningfully useful uh, devices and systems that support them. And, and I'm not like, and I'm not basing my perspective on, on any kind of exaggerated beyond the pale, beyond the, the realm of reason, alarmists, fear mongering. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's an observable reality if you step back far enough from your own attachment to the things that we love the way we make them the way we make everything the way we create the objects that we surround ourselves with is toxic af the way we harvest package and deliver the food we all rely on whether we live in the lap of luxury or are hardly surviving off the you know off the opposite end whether we're at the top of the of the tower or the bottom if you know that international film reference um all of it is toxic af in a way that is generationally unsustainable and we should have could have would have caught it 150 years ago Now, um, we should have, could have, would have caught the unsustainable, self-undermining nature of the way we build our systems, our cultural systems, our political systems, our um, our commercial systems, our our s systems of, that provide for you know ourselves. Not just 150 years ago when we hyper modernized. Uh, you know, not at the Industrial Revolution, not, not, but, you know, maybe as far back as at the, uh, at the agricultural, you know, uh, revolution. As far back as you can imagine, we coulda, shoulda, woulda, but we didn't. And here we are, friends. <laughs> um, so there's that, right? And that's daunting in and of itself. Not only because there's a huge group of people that just refuse to even deal with the issue, acknowledge that it's even remotely real, even as they live through its impacts, even as their friends and family and neighbors live through the damage, right? We're all 12 or six degrees away from folks who's, who are witnessing the reality um, uh, of the, the exponentially increasing rate in which Disastrous climate events seem to be exponentially increasing in rate and in intensity. And yet the, you know, and yet the, the, the public discourse outr outrage debate goes on. 
and the treadmills of argumentative um, argumentation tread on, right? Um, and that is this, that isn't to say like I'm I'm intellectually superior than anybody else, or you know, there's just and I'm not the only one I think that can speak from this perspective. There's just some of us that have been like, okay, guys, it sucks because we don't know what to do about it. But yeah, since nineteen, since whatever golden era of whatever you know Im- imagined, idealized. Uh, best moment in our recent postmodern history to sort of draw a delineation, right? Because everything that came before the series of of you know of mechanical industrial production revolutions, because there's a sort of an, a cascading series of revolutionary events, but everything that was before that was, for better or worse, operating at a much less toxically impactful level. Yes, there was there was high rate of local toxicity in many examples. City states, um, you know, in their in their post dark age modalities, you know, before we revolutionize and modernize them, and that took, you know, its own slow pace to achieve, uh, were toxic in their own ways. And people were, you know, living through the negative impacts of that in in a whole radical way uh, that we are all to be grateful for that we don't need most of us to deal with nowadays, except for the the tragic few who do live in such extreme uh, conditions of of poverty as to be uh, supposedly non-judgmentally, you know, uh, identified as third world conditions. Um, But that... That lifting up out of one set of horrific conditions created another set of horrific conditions that were broader, harder to track, harder to see, harder to comprehend, harder to to just sort of like, you know, wrap your brain around um, and more intensely dangerous to everyone. Right? <laughs> um, anyways, that's a whole sidebar of discussion. Um, and what I'm concerned with, and my questions are, you know, the questions that I'm throwing out there for public discourse are like, be, if we can s- imagine in a perfect set of circumstances, right, that, uh, that you and I, amongst uh, all the other sort of uh, uh, usual suspects of public discourse voices, were... were brought in a in a in a sudden moment of clarity and collective sanity um you know brought it into the the public discourse to discuss uh to have a meaningful discussion about what could be done in very real terms over the next 3 years 6 years 12 years etc uh to not only mitigate the impact and the damage and the and the destruction and the pain and the suffering caused by these kinds of intense you know uh weather events i almost said weatherological which is a, an actual valid scientific term in some of the timelines uh but it's not it's a totally uh sci-fi comedy spoof parody term in some of the other timelines but these intense further logical events, should they continue to escalate, which until we see a trending evidence line of, of different climatological behavior, uh, we shouldn't av- avoid considering as a you know, strong possibility. Um, but, I, but I digress. Let's put a pin in that. We could spend days doing you know, a special... Uh, deep dive discussions and question, you know, you know, asking questions about this sort of stuff. But in truth, what can we really do to not only mitigate, but identify real root causes that are worth, you know, and some would argue, but we have been, yes. And others would argue, yeah, but that's all corrupt and not as real as they claim it to be or whatever. Um, and I said all of that 
confrontational, tribalistic, ideological-driven discussion aside and ask, whatever we have been doing, what can we really do now to double down and, uh, you know, radically realign ourselves at a collective level, at a, at a neighborhood, at, a, at my house, your house uh, level, at a neighborhood level, at a community, you know, at a construction level, at an engineering practices, best practices level, um, at a political level, at a, a, at a large scale, ideal, sustainable best practices, um, you know, conceptual level, um, you know, from from my garage to the to the state to the to the nation state to the you know global scale. What can we really be doing? From you know helping to solve droughts by working with nature to capture these torrential rains that are now falling in in otherwise drought prone areas. Um, to, to help in in ways and scientific you know methodologies that are in tune with nature, not working in a self undermining way against nature, because nature clearly, in a way that we can identify, measure, confirm, and verify, has its forms, functions, and you know engineering systems that work. And we're not so lost. We're not living in such dark ages that we do not have some expertise in that, despite whatever naysayers may be, you know, uh, radically and melodramatically denying any and all scientific reasoning, uh, you know, research or thought or or paperwork or however you want to m- metric it. You know, anybody who denies all science yet continues to use tools developed by science boggles my mind. But I digress. Um, okay. So, wow. I really went on a deep dive and we've already been talking way too much longer than I anticipated to. Uh, it concerns me, right? As people suffer through these intense climactic events and and the people suffering are everyone from, from those that were already unhoused and living, you know, in, in, direct exposure to to climate um, to those who never imagined that their private property and the immediate uh, civic infrastructure around them would fail so brutally or would be damaged so intensely that they themselves suddenly find themselves on the brink of disastrous you know status of being unhoused. Uh, which is in and of itself its own epidemic crisis, which we've seen, um, you know, intense developments, crazy news and uh, outrageous um, tragedies. Uh, We know if we were to just do an episode about the homelessness epidemic in the United States and the world at large as as the refugee situations um, continue to escalate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but I digress. I feel like I've, I took a, a wild spiraling um, Earth-centric Gaia turn. Uh, let me let me zoom back and and before I take a, a final musical break to sort of re-cleanse the palate again and uh, and try to uh, 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 corral this episode into into a sort of um, some sort of landing you know landing point that I hope I might stick with some grace and, and, uh, skill. Uh, but maybe not. I never guarantee that I can weave, um, you know, a, a fully formed episode. This, this show is real raw and radically unscripted, dear friends. No one's handing me pages to read from. Um, the con, I, the reason I invoked that as the context of which I then wanted to sort of discuss so many other things going on um, in this country and in the world at large is because that's the tidal wave that's going to, if we don't set aside our differences, if we don't 
set aside our politics, if we don't set aside our any and all irrational argumentational, uh, you know, identity tokens that we're clinging to, to sort of craft the term, if we don't see past the things that were that are keeping us deeply polarized and deeply divided and deeply incapable um, at the collective level, at the political level, at the societal societal level, at the at the kitchen table level, um, from seeing eye to eye and realizing that we must uh, pivot and change our footing and change our posture and change our tactic and change our thinking and change our rationale and our perspective moving forward in terms of how we respond to all of this, how we even discuss it, let alone start building uh, in new ways, start engineering, new engineering, uh, start uh, you know providing ourselves with safe and secure, uh, humane and just and equal housing for all. As a meme put it recently, um, which I don't have in front of me, so I'm going to totally uh, butcher the paraphrasing of, but it's like um, everybody finish their plates before anybody gets seconds, but with housing. If, if we don't, and I don't mean that as a radical, from a radical political ideological perspective, from truly a humanist, like, hey, if we want to make sure that all of our grandparents and all of our future grandchildren, and I say that inclusively and collectively in the broadest of species-wide, you know, perspectives, uh, have a roof over their head and have a means by which they can safely and securely uh, you know, rest and and build their uh, livelihoods and provide for their families moving forward. Um, we've got to stop with the status quo because it's clearly and obviously not working to achieve that goal, right? It's achieving a bunch of other goals, which in the face of climate change and in the face, even if... Let's pretend we didn't have the climate change per, per, uh, um, parabolic, no, um, metaphysical, uh, metaphorical tidal wave, like 5,000 foot tall tidal wave of, of just exponentially growing disastrous events, you know, rearing its ugly head um, in the long distance, easily ignorable horizon of maybe 10 years away from us or less. Uh, and I don't mean to sound... Calamitous. Maybe another 30 years will go by and nothing quite as scary as the worst sci-fi we've imagined will really happen. But the chipping away at the edges will continue to grow. And the, and the, and the erosion that undermines the foundations of real houses and real civic structures and real meaningful needed infrastructure and real uh, centers of commerce and real... Uh, you know, hubs of transport and living are going to be undermined literally and figuratively and um, economically and uh, in all the ways that you can imagine and that you could actually measure. It's no coincidence that right now, if I may just wax philosophical and impromptu insight, um, that right now, uh, as is being reported on all the possible outlets, and I, again, I'm not pretending to be a journalist, I just happened to notice, as I was having, um, did I have breakfast? No, as I was having my morning one cup of actual coffee that I allow myself, because otherwise I'd, be a, I'd really be a disastrous mess in more ways than I'd care to get into, uh, if I let myself drink more coffee than that. And I know from lived experience. Uh, but as I, was as I was doing that and sort of just like, boop, let's pop through the channels, uh, the current president is, uh, did, was speaking um, at some sort of event, a, a live event commemorating um, the, the approval and inauguration of a massive engineering project to not only replace, but refurbish and, and rebuild 
because that's, you know, that also makes sense, right? Um, uh, an infrastructure, uh, an infrastructure, what's the right term? Um, byway, an infrastructure uh, tunnel system and railway system uh, that has long been overdue uh, in terms of like the list of infrastructure projects that need, need, desperately need attention in this country. And that's just a reality, right? You can get lost in the weeds about arguing about why and how we got here. But the reality is, if we do not take action and collectively uh, move the needle on the political willpower uh, of, of the broken political action system as we know it now, in the in the most immediate term, but also in the measured sense of like, and you know, thinking in terms of reform, so that in the so in the near to mid range to long distance future, such upkeep, such preventative maintenance, such innovative. Uh, you know, groundbreaking new development doesn't get neglected for such long and curiously um, pointless periods of time uh, to the point where, you know, uh, one or more things go, you know, mundanely wrong and you have a, in and of itself, sort of, oh God, what a chaotic mess of a... De- of a of a of an infrastructure disaster on your hands, and we have right like from the oil spills from pipelines and train derailments, etc., um, and and bridges that are crumbling. You know, it's a it's it's a song and dance that we've been hearing for decades, and I don't mean to just be another voice sort of pointing at the same problems and saying, "Hey, look at these problems." Um, but there's, you know, um. From the imaginary to the very real set of obstacles in the forms of corruption and in the forms of short-sightedness and in the forms of cutting corners, et cetera, et cetera, that have plagued infrastructure projects throughout history, let alone um, the political process of getting them into place, uh, you know, let alone you know, the, 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 the curiously crazy series of events um, in the last seven years, eight years, in the last, you know, forming decade. Um, And of which the punchline is, hey, at least it's finally infrastructure week. Because it really sort of finally is. And of course, people will will project imaginary problems with the project. And projects, whichever uh, they may be, may eventually uh, turn out to have uh, within them... um, uh, their own cropping up of of the ugly problem, you know, of the seemingly eternal problem of corruption. And I'm not pointing fingers or making actual accusations. I'm just saying that, like, from a broad picture, uh, observational point of view, that just seems to happen in human endeavors, right? For those of you who know, um, forgive the redundancy, but for those of you who don't, I can never speak of any given human endeavor theoretically or in actual terms in monolithic terms of good or bad because to me that's juvenile thinking and I don't mean to be rude or dis- hyper you know t- too brutally dismissive of those that do that but rather call it to their attention and ask them why do you engage in such judgmental thinking when none of it seems to ever render meaningful results this industry, that industry, that market, that this market, corrupt. You know, if we start hyper vilifying and objectifying the people involved and the human endeavors that those people involved may be part of, then we distract ourselves from identifying the real problems and 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 going beyond that because it's easy to try to it's easy to identify a problem. I'll say it one more time so that I feel really good about my enunciation. It's almost too easy to identify the problems, right? We already do that. And it's obviously too easy to just argue about the problems and their attributed causalities. What's really challenging is looking beyond the individual uh, symptomology of those problems over there and those problems over here and my problems and your problems and that 
uh, companies problems and those corporate market you know place problems and these political problems and and their political corruption and this, to go beyond that and to truly truly um, help each other find meaningful solutions at the individual level at the at the at the at the nuclear family level at the you know the, the kitchen table level um, and at the collective action level of our our immediate neighborhoods and societies and and communities uh you know the system of systems that we are a part of can neither be torn down and i mean that i mean the following in a very serious way um because i see a lot of talk of quote unquote and i'm and the following is not an endorsement quote unquote Tearing down the system, burning down the matrix, escaping the matrix, you know, all the variations of things that you can say that are obtuse enough to not seem like, like, you know, direct incitements to violence, but also clearly um, about a, a discussion of reform and change, which, uh, you know, taken as a whole, ranges the wide spectrum of, 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 uh, you know, chaotic good to chaotic neutral to chaotic, whoa, what the heck are you guys talking about? Okay? And everything in between. Um, there must be actual solutions. And this is a hill I'm willing to take a stand on. Uh, right? Is it a hill I'm willing to die on? I suppose so. There must be solutions to the problems we confront, most of which, in my humble opinion, our problems, we ourselves, if we embrace a species-wide level to our individual identities, right, that we ourselves created. And we can discuss that in depth. And in fact, we have. Uh, consider it a pin on the corkboard, friends. Go jump around the podcast and, and dip your mental uh, nugget into some of the discussion about the human species and how we are dynamically both individuals and a collective phenomena uh, and that we cannot escape that and, and we can neither hyper vilify one or the other uh, or try to force a wedge between those two they are um, as the proverb you know the proverbial proverb says two sides of the same coin as cliche as that may be but I digress um Where was I trying to stick it? I was trying to stick a landing and then play some music. <laughs> and I think I lost my way, dear friends. But in some ways, that is the way. Uh, we, we acknowledging the things that we must acknowledge, right? That are just, they're there. They can be observed. Uh, they can be confirmed. They can be measured. They can be uh, uh, attested to. And setting aside all those things that take a few too many steps, right? Take You apply the Akram's razor of critical thinking and go, wow, there's a few too many things that would require uh, uh, that to be true. And there's a few too many steps that would require me to the capacity to even begin to pretend that I, I'm able to confirm it. Um, and the, the, the more uh, obtuse and bizarre and you know weird and out there it gets, the, 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 the less likely... Um, you know, the likelihood, the less likely the likelihood that, that it can be confirmed, right? Then, then, then maybe the less energy we need to spend uh, on that if we've still got ways to short-term, mid-term, long-term build baby-stepped, uh, cumulatively impactful collective solutions that are meaningful, practical, safe, sound, and really do uh, bring about meaningful change to those impacted by whatever the problem may be, right? Using, you know, climate, catastrophic climate events as one example amongst uh, an almost a tyranny of examples, right? Ranging from, from, from the political shenanigans uh, of just how extreme political shenanigans have gotten you, even in isolation if you if you don't take into account uh, the the exponential which is its own separate issue 
the exponential hypernormalization of uh, of public, politically motivated uh, civic violence that's been occurring, right? And I, I was going to talk about a bunch of different things and, and sort of highlight some of the events, but we all have been sitting around either, you know, hearing the news or ignoring the news about it. So either you, you know, those who know, no, those who don't know, no, those who are convinced that the news is all fake, don't care. Um, but, but maybe, maybe everyone can agree that beyond that which has already been tried, there is, hopefully, realistically, meaningfully, some solution that might bring about transformational, meaningful, authentic change. Am I going to try to snake oil salesman use some snake oil? No, but I am going to invite you to explore my podcast because that's the central pillar holding up the multi-tiered uh, interconnected series of discussions that we've already had and that we will continue to be having as history unfolds before us and weaves new tangled webs of interconnected crazy into that which came before. And friends, there's so much to discuss that I could probably spend days, if not weeks, doing multi-hour long recording sessions, and I still couldn't get through all of it. But I think um, at each, with each episode and with each stab, um, we sort of weave our way through chaos towards something that I hope, if I, unless I'm in my own echo chamber of, of insanity, I think might actually be worth exploring. And that is, uh, you know, as I've said before, and I probably will say again, something that does fringe on the fantastical. But I humbly implore you to uh, consider it for just a moment. this possible solution or series of solutions or possible complex of activities that could solve the problem. What could it be? Uh, a new and uh, hitherto un, um, unlistened to? No, that doesn't make sense. Hitherto unex unexplored? No. Uh, a hitherto not? No. And I don't know why I'm stuck on trying to use the word hitherto, but it's totally derailing me. Uh, you might, if you are new to the show, friends, you might be asking yourself if you have, as of yet, not engaged with the content uh, quite fully. What could this crazy person be suggesting is a solution? Is it religion? Is it spiritual practice of some form? Is it a magical phrase? Is it an ideological construct that must be adhered to? Is it... Um, uh, a pantheon of ideas that must be believed in? Is it a uh, is it a particular style or genre of dancing that must be danced? No. And yes, and no. Um, it is an unscrutable exercise of internal exploration 
that cannot be quantified, but only explored with authenticity. And it includes always, no matter what path, and everyone's path is unique, um, no matter what path you take, uh, it includes implicitly a struggle with one's own demons, one's own boundaries, one's own uh, misinformation, one's own ideological constructs, one's own blinders and or belief systems that are impacting the way in which we choose to perceive the world. Uh, but friends, if you're new, hang tight. I have, we have, uh, ventured to, in, to discuss and explore uh, this bizarre and crazy idea before on the show, and we will again. But having rambled for much longer than I intended to, and sort of strayed a bit far afield from my original list of things I thought it would be interesting to discuss, because holy moly, what a crazy 31 days it's been. Um, but you all know that. You all feel that. We all share in common, uh, if not in exact level of degree, some feeling of exhaustion by it. And I say to you, friends, there is not only always a font, a fountain of hope to tap into, um, but there is always deep, meaningful, tangible, um, practical, spiritual, something or another to turn to, right? And the weird part is, Unlike most people taking your money and talking about this subject matter, I really can't tell you what that means to you other than share with you my thoughts uh, and uh, and best uh, best most well-intentioned efforts to describe the indescribable. Um, and that, dear friends, is the the weird and wacky, um, warm and fuzzy core and center gooey nugget, uh, the beating heart of this and all the projects, um, no matter how uh, fictional or how literarily liter literally real um, the words uh, may be. Uh, deep down, it's about exploring the phenomena that we know as our own. Uh, phenomenological biome of experience, the the envelope in which we find our consciousness, where we will truly find solutions. Um, that or I'm, you know, way off on some horrible, horrible rid herring of of uh, of 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 questionable uh, and or uh, nonsensical. Uh, thinking, but my thinking, quite honestly, as I try to steer this episode towards some sort of um, briefly constructed end, is that like um, w the perspective that I bring uh, to the show and and the ideas that I I try to connect, um, I'm not doing so from a perspective of belief I have accepted or a doctrine that I have um, been inculcated with or a, a school of thought I have subscribed to or a religious uh, ideological um, construct that I have um, I have chosen to take on but rather the the sort of Exhausting series of real world lived experiences, um, and my and my search for uh, you know others' thoughts and testimonies about such experiences, um, and, and the the many 
thinkers out there trying to articulate uh, the opposition to them, right? Uh, always returning to um, like the something no one can take away from me. The phenomenological experiences I have undeniably uh, lived through myself. Um, and to that end, I say, friends, please join me as uh, I will return in the coming days and weeks. And you are invited to explore, uh, in my absence, the the archive of content that's already here uh, in front of you, um, whether you're listening to on Sprecher or YouTube, etc. Um, that is, you know my scattered but somehow um sort of uh cosmically interconnected series of of rants and ravings and extemporaneous thoughts uh curiosities questions and anecdotal um experiences um that i'm sharing uh with you dear friends um and that I, everything in my mind points to the lack of a solution out there most especially solutions um, that are rooted in any forms of violent action, right? So I invite you, friends, to join me uh, in contemplating such things as we already have and we will continue to do so in episodes uh, in front of us. Um, having run out of steam, I will awkwardly say thank you for your support. Thank you for taking the time to tune in and listen. And um, thank you for uh, subscribing, following, liking, commenting. If you're new here, please do jump on the, uh, the commenting bandwagon and uh, share your thoughts, questions, concerns, critiques, debate, statements, whatever. You want to get into it, let's get into it. One of the things I want to do uh, over the course of this next year uh, is go back for myself and review... Uh, uh, you know, certain key episodes, um, and and uh, and try to respond to commentary that that may or may not have been responded to in the past out there, uh, and to see if there's a way I can try to, um, as this is distributed on a multitude of platforms, um, if there's any way I can try to aggregate them all in, in into an easy to to aggregate place or whether I can try to invite and encourage more and more of, of you dear listeners who have been listening to this show uh, recurringly to come on down to Sprecher.com or Facebook uh, whichever is more convenient for you to join curiously you can join Sprecher.com through the Facebook sign up widget um, but I digress there's a Facebook page for the Almost Daily Zencast in which you can find Facebook postings for each and every episode. Well, almost every episode. Um, well, all, each and every episode going forward and a wide variety of a cross-section of episodes going backwards in time. I think the, the, the most accurate, although still, I must confess, not entirely 100% complete archive and collection of all episodes uh, of this uh this uh, content creation project known as the Almost Daily Zencast is now Sprecher.com forward slash show forward slash Zencast. Namaste. Peace, love, and grooviness be with you. Thank you for lo for tuning in and listening. Uh, this has been your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Until next time, namaste and thank you. I, well, I'm just looping. I'm just getting out of control. I'm going to stop now. Peace. Bye. Ciao. And that is what I've got to say about that. As always, thank you kindly for listening. This has been the Almost Daily Zencast. With your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zappa. Until next time, may peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your heart.